So, in today's lecture, we will have a detailed discussion exactly on what is a digital signal. So, in the previous lectures, we have already discussed that a digital signal is nothing but analog signal sampled in time. So, that in this picture, you may be clearly understand that it is a sampled signal which is having values at discrete instants of time. So, at this point of time, it has got a value of at second instant of time, it has got a value of 5. At third instant of time, it has got a value of 2.7. At fourth, it has got a value of 3.5. So, all these samples are taken from a continuous time signal which is an analog signal. Now, this is a digital signal that is by definition it is understood. Now, I told in previous lectures that a digital signal reduces or helps in reducing power. So, I will tell you how this can be very simply explained that how a digital signal can reduce power compared to an analog signal. So, analog what is power? How do you calculate power say p if I write? We know that power is calculated as p is either it is v square by r or it is i square r current square i is current v is voltage v square by r r is resistance or p is i square r or you no know, we can also write p as equal to v into i that means basically power is proportional to voltage signal or it is proportional to current signal by all these expressions that is clear so if you compare an analog signal with a digital signal, analog signal like I said, it is a continuous signal. So, at each and every point, if you go on calculating the power, that means at each and every point of time, there is some value. That means, if you say this is a voltage signal, voltage with time for analog signal, this is an analog signal suppose. So, at each and every point of time you have to calculate the power. If you sum it up and if you compare that to digital one, the digital signal does not have values at each and every point of time. That means, if you calculate power here, definitely the power is less. If you calculate here, it will be this plus this plus this, whereas if you calculate here, it has got values at every point of time. So, at every point of time it is calculated as v square by r plus v square by r plus v square by r and so on. Here you do not have at each and every point of time you do not have these values. So, definitely this summation is less than this summation. So, power consumption is less this is very very simply it is it can be understood that why during transmission of signal a digital signal requires less power. That is our requirement that is beneficial for us. So, that is why we have converted it to a digital another domain which is called digital domain. Now, the point arrives that whether this signal is sufficient for us to understand or sufficient to reconstruct the original signal that is one very important question that you are making an approximation, you are taking samples out of this, not all samples, so as to reduce the power. So, how many samples you must take in order to reconstruct the original signal, that is also a very important point of concern. Like, suppose this is the original signal, it is best to have all the sample values, but then it is it will consume more power during transmission. So, what we are doing? We are taking number of samples. Say, I take one and two samples, two samples from here. So, if I take these two samples, anyone cannot understand from these two samples that what was the actual signal. So, if you try to draw it, 
I may draw it like a signal like this or suppose with these two samples here, I can construct the signal like this, but it is not the original one. So, when during reconstruction, one you know may wrongly you know make reconstruct the original signal. So, you in order to have the original signal reconstructed properly, there must be a minimum number of samples taken. So, that criteria it is called Nyquist criteria, a person a scientist called Nyquist first derived this that what is the minimum number of samples one must take to reconstruct the or at least you know properly reconstruct the original signal. So, that is also a very important point to be considered. That means, suppose for example, if I draw it, if I take samples like this, then one will be able to you know draw it like ok. So, this was the original signal. So, it is like that you have to take number of samples in such a way, so as to you know it can be reconstructed it properly reconstructed back properly. So, taking number of samples from analog signals is also a very important point. That means, it is a trade off I, I mentioned this term trade off, trade off between power reduction in power consumption and to reconstruct the original signal back. So, you cannot take one or two samples, you can say the power is minimized by maybe 90 percent, but your original signal is lost. So, that is not our uh, goal. Our goal is to have the uh, original signal back, but with you know reduced power. So, we may take 60 percent of the samples, maybe 50 percent of the samples in such a way, so that we can reconstruct it back. So, that is one very important point of concern when you are making an analog signal, sorry digital signal from an analog one. So, coming back to the digital signal. So, by now it is clear that why a digital signal consumes less power during its transmission, because it has got less number of samples and as you know as chosen by the humans or as chosen by the user. And it is also a fact that in different circuits or in different applications you choose different number of samples depending on the application. You know somewhere you uh, may require to take maybe 80 percent of the samples, somewhere you uh, you are okay with 60 percent of the samples accordingly you take number of samples and uh, transmit it. So, this is what a digital signal is. Now, the next question is by digital signal many of us understand that it is basically two numbers 0 and 1. We understand in such a way that you know digital signals are all about these two numbers 0 and 1. We know there are few gates AND gate, NAND gate etcetera and the input 1 is 0, 1 is 1. So, what is meant by a 0 and a 1? Are they two numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, why there are no 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9? When we normally generally uh, see digital signals or operations with digital signals, then we only say this is 0, the 1 is 0, 1 is 1, 1 is 1, 1 is another is also 1. So, output is 1 or output is 0. So, what is that 0, what is that 1? We do not understand. Digital signals are not about zeros and ones, it is only about having discrete values at discrete instants of time that is a digital signal. Now, there are many digital signals out of those digital signals, one is binary signal that is uh, used uh, normally by our computers or uh, in many digital applications the binary signal is binary digital signal rather is used which is a type of or subclass of digital signals. So, in the next lecture we will consider the subclasses or types of digital signals in detail.